Time for our first look at sports with Carly Agro, and Carly is someone who definitely knows about what it's like to get a ride uh, to a school in the States. You went to Florida, I believe. I did, yeah. Miami was my first stop, and uh, I'm very happy for Michael Hefner and the opportunity that he's about to embark on. Well, Michael Hefner's whole life is about to change. Five Bobcats have accepted hockey scholarships, but this Border City native is the only one that is heading south of the border. Hefner is making his way to Boston in the fall to attend the Wentworth Institute of Technology. Sarah Olashak tells us how Michael will be keeping close to his feline roots. On the ice, Mike is still a cat, just not a bobcat. This 21-year-old is chasing his hockey dream all the way to Boston to play for the Leopards men's hockey program. First time he skated was in West Edmonton Mall. He dropped him at center ice with the first time with skates on and uh, he said let me go and he started skating on his own. Mike is looking for more than just a hockey career. He wants an education. I went to Alberta Cup and they asked me the question, what did you want to do when you, know, like, you get older with your hockey? And everyone's saying I want to play in the WHL, I want to go to the NHL. And my uh, comment was, I want to get a scholarship. The assistant captain tallied nine goals and 11 assists in 57 games this season and is preparing to make the transition from the AJHL to the NCAA. Way faster, bigger ice surface, more puck movement, more consistency, and uh, I don't know, more development, I believe. There's no more babysitting. Uh, there's a schedule, there's a criteria, there's, you have to have yourself in order, um, you know, a schedule that you have to follow every single day. Hockey won't be the defenseman's only focus when he starts school in the fall. They offered an engineering program, which is something I'd like to really take interest to. I'll be happy becoming an engineer because it's something I want to do, but say something does come up and I'm obviously not going to turn down an offer, so. This bobcat has two months before he migrates south. And I always told him, I says, have fun with it, see where it takes you, and uh, try to get an education and chase, still chase your dream. Get out of the hometown, I've got great parents, but it's time to move out of, the, out of the house and get on with his life, and I think he's going to do very, very well. I will miss Lloydminster. Uh, <laughs> played a lot of hockey here, grew up here, born and raised, and uh, yeah, it's going to be missed, but I'll be coming back every summer, hopefully. Sarah Leshek, New Cap Sports. Only 30 drivers are eligible for a CPCA membership. And ever since 2004, Devin Mitzwing has been one of those drivers trying to control over 4,000 pounds of real horsepower around a track at over 45 miles an hour. While some parents might worry about the intensity that Chuck Wagon Racing is synonymous with, on most days, Devin Mitzwing has his father and brothers racing around the same track, sometimes even trying to get around it before he does. Like we grew up together watching my dad, me and my brothers, and now we're all part of the team and we're all doing pretty good as individuals too. So it's, it makes it more special to me to have my brothers riding behind me. We got to go down the road with our family and everybody's here, so everybody's close here, so it's nice. Devin and Dale probably learned how to turn and burn around the same time they learned how to walk, but this driver-outrider combo have grown into real competitors. Heading into this weekend in Wainwright, Devin led the CPCA standings with 214 points. You know, it feels awesome to wake up every day and see yourself at the top, but it's still early. It's, like it's still too early in the season to be happy about where you're at, so we just got to keep running clean and run hard and hopefully stay there. If Cold Lake hadn't been cancelled, the Mitzwing family would have been battling it out against another father-son combo, Gary and Logan Gorst. But with only so many talented Mitzwings to go around, a family feud might have been avoided. That was kind of tough. I rode for my dad all my life, though, so when he kind of brought me into it, so I thought... It was most righteous to ride for him, you know. So that's the way that was kind of decided. It always makes it uh, more interesting for me. Like, for me growing up, I always watched him and he's always been on top. So to be hooked in the same heat as my dad and guys like Gary, it means, means a lot to me. It means I'm improving as a driver and doing things right out there. This weekend, Devin isn't hooked against his father, Ray, and both will have the chance to count on Dale for his outriding skill. Inside the CPCA, the view from the barns, the wagon bunks, and from the track. Ignite your adrenaline. Well, last night, Devin missed out on leading the show for Point Wagons. An outrider penalty paved the way for Vern Nolan. His 104.30 put him in first for that category. Gary Gortz took the top time of the night with a rapid 102.55. That puts Double G one step closer to Sunday's H&E &E, oil field services. $10,000 dash for cash. Vern Nolan, Gary Gorst, and Wayne Knight are the top three with their point wagons after night number one. The top three drivers after Saturday night qualify for that H&E Oilfield Services $10,000 
that you can win on uh, Championship Sunday. It's going to be a good one. That is your first look at New Cap Sports.